Mike Pompeo. Good morning, sir. Morgan, it's great to be with you. Thank you. Thank, well, thank you for dialing in. You know, we have been talking, of course, about the elections that happened last night, about what happened to Rashida Tlaib getting censored um, in the House. And one of the things I was thinking about having you come on today, what we're really missing from this administration, which you would have had if you, if you were still st Secretary of State, is moral clarity. You know, moral clarity on what is right, on what is wrong, standing up for Israel. Can you give me your thoughts, sir, and sort of grade the administration on how they stand uh, in standing up for Israel in this current conflict with Hamas? Well, Morgan, you know, when, when your central foreign policy thesis for two and a half years is surrounding climate change, it, it, makes, it, it makes it very difficult when evil raises its head and the bad guys could see that America was on its back foot, that it was focused on things other, DEI, all, all the things that the Biden administration has put a focus on. And so now you see two wars. And I must say, I, I was listening closely to Secretary Blinken these last couple of days. The moral clarity to which you referred uh, appeared when he was talking about the images that he saw. Uh, he was clearly moved by them. Uh, who, who could not be? But when he began to talk about how to resolve this, how to protect the people of Israel, how to protect the citizens living in Gaza, the Palestinians living in Gaza. He began to talk about the Palestinian Authority as the solution. And, and this, is, this is nonsense on stilts, and it is dangerous because it, it belies the, the, the morality, the evil that sits in the hearts of Abu Mazen and the leadership in the Palestinian Authority. It doesn't understand that the Islamic Republic of Iran and its IRGC terror force, they, they, they want to wipe the Jewish people off of the land. They want to eliminate Israel. They want to destroy America. And if you if you take your eye off that ball, if you begin to say, well, this is complicated, well, uh, President Obama, right, we're all complicit, no one has clean hands, that's just not true. Uh, the United States is a fundamentally decent nation, and we stand for good things in the world. And so when you lose that moral clarity, you begin to see precisely what we saw happen now just over four weeks ago. You know, you're totally right, sir. And one of the things, you know, that is confounding when you see people like Rashida Tlaib pretending uh, that these ha attacks by these Hamas terrorists are somehow about finding a political solution for the Palestinian people. I mean, it, it takes away the, the, the true evil from what happened on October 7th. I was just reading about some of these Hamas terrorists and from, from one of a, a European parliamentarian that viewed some of the unfiltered clips. And he said that these Hamas terrorists calling their parents, crying with joy, said, Mom, I killed 10 of them with my own hands. Their blood is still on my hands. He called his own mother to rejoice over the fact that he had just killed innocent Israeli Jewish civilians. It's chilling. I've, I've seen some of these videos as well. And Morgan, you and I spent time in the West Bank. We spent time in Ramallah yeah. um, talking to these folks. Um, there was one thing was clear. They, they did not want a two-state solution. They wanted a one-state solution with Israel gone. Uh, and, you know, I saw today uh, a clip that uh, the communications person for the White House talked about uh, the absolute absence of clarity around whether the Golan Heights belongs to Israel. <laughs> right. these, are kind of, these, these are the kind of things that, that, that tell the Ayatollah, that tell uh, Nasrallah, who's the leader of Hezbollah, that tell them, these folks are weak. They're not going to protect fundamental okay. truths, right? This is the more like fundamental truths. Like, this is the rightful homeland of the Jewish people. That the U.S. Embassy ought properly to be in Jerusalem. That the Golan Heights is absolutely a central part of the nation of Israel. When you begin to round those corners, and you can't speak basic truths, you start to see all the craziness you see in the streets of Europe and of the United States. You see precisely what Rashida Tlaib says when she talks about from the river to the sea. This is this is dangerous, not just for the people of Israel, but for Gulf state Arabs, for uh, the Palestinians who are living in Gaza, and for people here in the homeland in the United States, too. Don't forget, several million folks crossed the border the last two years. We have no idea who they are. The Ayatollah right. may well know who some of them are. You know, sir, you were, um, we were talking about how you were Secretary of State, but you were also the CIA director in the first two years of the Trump administration uh, when we had to destroy the physical caliphate of ISIS uh, in Iraq and Syria. Uh, they had started to cut off the heads of people. They were, you know, wanted to be a threat to the American homeland. Are there any sort of comparable uh, scenarios or, or, or anything that's similar to the fight that we had to take against ISIS to destroy their physical caliphate and the 
the fight that Israel has to take against Hamas to destroy their caliphate, so to speak, in Gaza? Morgan, there's no doubt about that. There, there is, it's a little bit different in the sense of uh, for years and years and years, the uh, Biden administration, the Obama administration before them funded this group. We, we didn't do that with ISIS. That makes this problem even more difficult. But the resolution has to be the same. Uh, Hamas has to be eliminated in its entirety. And that means every leader, uh, every foot soldier, every piece of infrastructure, communications equipment, weapon systems, uh, they must be eliminated in their entirety. And we cannot give them the spark of hope. What, what keeps them at this is the hope that one day they will, in fact, destroy the nation of Israel. And when That's you begin right. to talk about when you begin to talk about things like the Biden administration is showing daylight between the United States and Israel, you continue that spark of hope and you encourage the Iranian regime. You know, sir, we, we've been talking about Iran. One of the things that we know is that Iran and Hezbollah have sleeper cells in the United States. One of the things that we know is, as you said, almost two million gotaways over the border. Uh, we know that the Iranians have been caught at the border. And, and one of the things I hope you don't mind me bringing up that we know is that the Iranians are plotting at this moment to kill you, to take your life, your family's life, if they can. Uh, you have active threats because of your time as Secretary of State, as do other uh, cabinet officials. So what is it going to take for this administration to admit that their Iran policy, which, by the way, is led by a guy who had his security clearance removed and is now under F FBI investigation, what is it going to take for them to admit that this po uh, policy has been a failure and disastrous for the Middle East? Oh, Morgan, I wish I knew, um, because I would try to make that happen. I hope that, I hope that members of Congress, frankly, from both parties, understand that the first tool to push back against each of those threats you described, assassination campaigns against Americans, uh, efforts to expand their, their regional footprint in Baghdad, in Yemen, and they're firing missiles today from Yemen uh, into Saudi Arabia. They've now had a dozen of attacks on American soldiers in Iraq. Right. The first, the, first, the first rule has to be deny them wealth and resources. Put pressure on the regime by denying them money. And sadly, today, Morgan, as we sit here today, uh, the Iranians will ship three to four million barrels of crude oil and receive cash for that crude oil. Mm -hmm. That's just that's just that is lazy. That is the failure to recognize that you got your policy wrong. And I hope they'll change. I hope Congress will put the, put in place a set of requirements for funding that tell the administration that no, you have to get this right. You must enforce the existing sanctions against this regime in Iran. Uh, you know, sir, one of the things that you just mentioned were the attacks uh, that are by Iranian uh, proxies, militias, terrorist groups against U.S. forces. We know that there's been at least 40 attacks uh, against our troops in the Middle East, especially in Iraq over the last month. We know that there's at least 20, you know, more. I've read varying reports of the number uh, that are injured. I'm sure that that will, uh, that, that will go up. You know, it's interesting whenever the uh, Secretary of Defense, Austin, came out and said, you know, that they had made these strikes against Syria, I kind of chuckled to myself because I was thinking of the response options that you used to give the president of the United States. And I don't know what the response options were that we gave Biden, but I know that these Syria strikes, which were the equivalent of thumping the Iranians in the nose, had to be at the bottom of the list of the options that were given to the president. What else do you think they need to do to respond to these attacks against U.S. troops? Morgan, this is really pretty simple. And we saw this during uh, our four years as well. The Iranians will push and push and push. So they came across the Euphrates River in Syria, supporting a Russian effort. We crushed them there. The Syrians, supported by Iran, used chemical weapons in Syria. We fired several dozen Tomahawk missiles. When Qasem Soleimani was seeking to kill more Americans in Iraq, we crushed him, too. You have to impose costs on the regime. If you simply go after the proxies, if you simply say, you fired an artillery round at our embassy in Baghdad, we're going to go find the knucklehead who put the artillery in the air. That's the game they want us to play. You have to impose real costs on them. The president has a wide range of tools, not all of them overt kinetic. He has a wide range of tools to demonstrate and communicate to the Iranians enough. Stop attacking Americans. And, you know, of all the things that have happened these last four weeks, I, the weakness in that response, I'm convinced, is giving Hamas and Hezbollah and the Houthis in Yemen and the mm -hmm. Iranian militias, the Iraqi militias sponsored by Iran in Iraq, I'm, they have to be encouraged by this. And I know that the butcher of Baghdad, President Raisi, is saying, we have the Americans on their back foot. We're not going to give up until we choke them out. 
You know, we have just less than, than a minute, sir. Just, you know, final words. You spent so much time with Bibi Netanyahu, uh, the prime minister. Uh, what are your words today for uh, our allies, uh, our friends in Israel and for the prime minister? I hope the Israelis, uh, not just Prime Minister Netanyahu, but the, the people and all of the leadership will do what they know needs to be done. There is going to be enormous pressure, even, I'm afraid, from our administration. Do the hard work that is necessary to protect yourselves, and America will be with them. Thank you so much, uh, former Thank Secretary you, of State Michael Pompeo, my boss. I think the best press, uh, Secretary of State that we've had in modern history. So, thank you, sir. This